Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, we're jumping in to talk about range setting for your liquidity pools and a three pillar framework that you can use to help setting those ranges. Make sure to drop a thumbs up on the video below. Hit subscribe. Check out the links in the description for the UIG if you want to learn more about DeFi liquidity provision. So let's jump in and talk about setting ranges. Okay, so for the purpose of today's video, we're going to be looking at Ethereum and the example will be using an Ethereum USDC pool and thinking about setting a range for Ethereum with the current price and the current price action. And the framework I want to outline has this three pillar step by step process that I like to use for helping me set ranges when entering pools. And so the first way or first pillar of that framework that I like to use is simple technical analysis, i.e. finding key levels of support and resistance on the chart. The second pillar is using ATR bands or average true range bands, which we'll show you. It is an indicator directly in trading view. And the expected move calculation is pillar number three. And what I'm trying to do when using this framework is find some level of confluence between these three different pillars so that I can use all three in tandem to help create a strategic range for my pool. Okay, technical analysis, as we'll see in a moment, is somewhat subjective. You can argue different levels of key support and resistance on the chart, and essentially you're eyeballing it based on what you're seeing in the chart over the past number of weeks and months. ATR bands are a little bit more objective and then expected move calculation is using that statistical analysis, removing the element of subjectivity, making it very objective about the expected move based on data and certain key metrics like historical volatility. So let's jump in and do a quick example. Technical analysis is up first. And if I was looking at this Ethereum chart here right now, what I'd be doing is I would be wanting to mark in the key levels of support and resistance. Now, Ethereum has been moving in a very kind of nice sideways channel here, accumulating in and around this 200 day simple moving average. If I am to draw in the key levels of support and resistance that I see on the chart, very simply, I would be marking them in something like this, where we have a very key level of resistance that we ran into here, right around that 2820 area. We can also see how that actually even extends all the way back to this period here over in um, this area in February of 2025. So again, key level of resistance there on the upside for Ethereum finding resistance at that 2820 level. On the downside, we can see a clear level of support around 2220. And again, we wicked down here, went even lower with the wick, but the body of the candle closed on the 23rd of June around that 2220 area. So if I'm to measure that on a percentage basis, we can see that range is roughly speaking 25% or so wide. Not too bad, maybe a little bit wider than I would find ideal for a WETH USDC pool, depending on your goals depending on how much yield you want to generate, you might want something a little bit more narrow. Again, 20 to 25% might be perfect for you, but let's take a look at what the ATR bands are saying. Again, if you have not used the ATR bands before, you can find them by searching ATR in the indicators area here on TradingView. You will find the ATR bands indicator, and I've got it here saved on my own chart. So if I bring up the ATR bands, what this is showing me is essentially the average price above and below the spot price that the asset has been trading at for the past 14 days. There is some more intricate ways that you can configure the scale factor and ATR period here within the ATR band indicator. Maybe we'll do a separate video on that. So drop a comment below this video if you want that. But what the ATR band is showing me here are two key levels of support and resistance, again, based on the average trading price of Ethereum over the past 14 days. So again, if I come in here and mark those ATR band levels, I'm going to mark them in a different color to represent the price action of Ethereum with those ATR bands marking the green and the red line as key levels of support and resistance. So let's make them a slightly different color. I'm going to put them in red here just so we can clearly distinguish the ATR bands from the subjective levels of support and resistance that I identified with the white lines. Okay, I'm going to remove the ATR band indicator for now. We've got our two levels marked in here, and you'll notice the ATR band level is a more narrow range coming in closer to 16 to 17% wide. Okay, the final 
calculation I'm going to do is the expected move calculation. And what this is, it's essentially a calculation that allows us to understand how much volatility we could expect with Ethereum based on its historical volatility over the past 14 days. Again, in this example, you can use any look back period you wish, but we are going to use another indicator directly here in TradingView. If you click on indicators, you can find this historical volatility indicator. If you don't have it saved, you can obviously just type in historical. It's going to bring up the historical volatility indicator. And what we want to do is we want to show that indicator and it's going to bring up a box at the bottom of the screen here on TradingView to show us a historical volatility score for Ethereum. Now, by default, the HV look back period, you can see it's giving us a historical volatility with a length of 10, i.e. a 10 day look back period, because this is a daily chart that we're looking at. If we want to tweak that, which I do, I want to click on these settings and I want to change it to a 14 day look back period. And you'll notice that changes the historical volatility score ever so slightly. But the number I'm interested in here is this 61.24%. It's telling me that Ethereum has had a 61.24% historical volatility over the past 14 days. And what that allows me to do is plug this number into an expected move calculation so that we can determine how much movement we could expect with Ethereum to the upside or to the downside based on that historical volatility score with a certain degree of confidence. So I'm going to jump over here to ChatGPT very, very quickly because I've been using this prompt. And again, you can copy this or we'll, we'll leave it in the description below this video to calculate the expected move for Ethereum based on the below data. So the current price is sitting at 2517. So I'm going to change that last number very quickly. The current price of Ethereum sitting at 2517, as we can see on the chart here. The next variable is the historical volatility score. So the HV14 is equal to, in this case, 61.23, which I need to plug into this particular prompt, 61.23. And we want to calculate the expected move over the next 14 days with 68% confidence. Why do we use this number 68% confidence? Well, 68% confidence is equal to one standard deviation. If you wanted to actually increase that level of confidence, you could create a 98% degree of confidence, which would be two standard deviations. But what we're looking at here is current price, 2517 historical volatility over the past 14 days of 61.23, we're asking for a calculation for the expected move over the next 14 days based on a 68% degree of confidence. And if we run this prompt, ChatGPT is gonna run the calculation and give us the numbers that we could expect for a move in Ethereum to the upside or to the downside based on that historical volatility. So what you're seeing here is the lower bound, it's saying could move as low as 2153 and the upper end as high as 2880. Okay, if we go back to the chart, we're gonna mark those levels in. 2153 on the lower end, I'm gonna remove this here for the moment. We've got 2153 on the bottom side. I'm gonna plug that in here on the chart. Again, we're going to use a different color to represent the actual um, line here so we can distinguish. Let's use a green line for the expected move calculation. And on the upper end, it was telling us 2880. And we can plug that in again here on the chart by moving all the way up here to 2880 and plugging that in on the chart. You'll notice that is ever so slightly wider than both my subjective technical analysis and the ATR bands. So slightly wider, if we're to measure that on a percentage basis, we're probably looking somewhere closer to 33 to 35% wide for that expected move calculation. If we reran that and used 98% confidence, it's actually going to give us an even wider range because it's having a higher degree of confidence and thinking about the expected move and the range in which Ethereum would actually buffer over the next 14 days. So you can see it's as low as 1770 and as high as 3263. So that is it with a 98% confidence. But the point I'm making here is I want to use all three of these different pillars to give me the full picture of what I could 
think about for a range when setting up my WETH USDC pool. So now we've got three different options here. And from this point, really it's up to you to think about where you wanna draw the confluence and how you wanna actually set the range and maybe reverse engineer that based on some of your goals. Like we said, the ATR bands is a more narrow range and it's gonna allow you to generate better fees, but you may have to rebalance more frequently if you're only going with that 16% wide range. The next thing I would actually do here is I would probably run a simulation for these different ranges to understand the expected yield I could generate month over month if I was to use these. Again, if you have certain bias, you might even use a combination of these particular lines. You might think that, okay, I wanna leave more room to the downside here, so I'm gonna use my subjective level of support at 2220, but I think that we're not gonna go a whole lot higher until Bitcoin breaks to all-time highs and Ethereum following suit. So I'm going to use the upper end of the ATR band as the upper bound of my range. So it's up to you to ultimately make that final decision, but drawing confluence and drawing information from these three different pillars is going to be helpful for getting multiple data points and multiple references for you to set your range. So hopefully that was helpful, guys. I wanted to put together that three pillar framework, very simple, step by step, showing you how to use it to set up ranges, finding confluence between different data points, and ultimately giving you the full picture to make a well-informed decision for setting those ranges. Hopefully that is making sense. Drop any questions in the comments below this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, check out the UIG. We're helping fast track clients every single day generate consistent yield and income from DeFi liquidity provision. This is your chance, your opportunity to take back your financial future. Check out the comments below, hit that link. There's a completely free course. Check out the UIG community as well, and we'll catch you in the next one.